After an unscheduled encounter with a middle-aged Native American chrono look-alike, it's finally time to move on to the Driftvale Drawbridge. So, Lisa's about to contact Clay, tell him to lower the bridge. Yeah, Clay sure does a lot of stuff in Driftvale City. As I said before, he's a company president, he's the gym leader, and he's in charge of controlling when the bridge goes up and down. So, seems like he agreed so that as the bridge goes down to pretty good visuals for a DS game, I gotta admit. It's, it looks especially cool with the sunset, so I guess it's uh, fortunate that I did this at this hour. So, yeah, the gym leader of the next town, town sorry, may take some getting used to. Yeah, way to be nice, Elisa, because I second that. The guy's an asshole! And <laughs> you'll see why shortly. Oh, just come off it, Sharon! The time to say that kind of thing has long come and, come and gone. Moving along, the Driftvale Drawbridge, which introduces a new equivalent for uh, dust clouds and shaking grass. In this area, you can see, yeah, shadows of bird Pokémon. Sometimes, when you step on those shadows, you can get wings uh, of various kinds that increase the EV of a certain stat by one. This is a lot less than vitamins, and oh, I think I heard something. Oh yeah, resist wing. This one um, increases, I believe, special defense EVs by one, and oh wow! That's convenient because I wanted to meet a ducklet just to show you that it can be done. This is another one of the things you can find when uh, going into these shadows. So, yeah, you may be wondering, why the fuck am I using Rock Smash on a ducklet? Well, simply put, I want to catch it. The reason for that is because it's a great HM Slave. It can learn both Fly and Surf, which are by far the two most commonly used HMs in the game. As far as I can tell, none of them are mandatory, but they're still very, very convenient. That and Surf opens up a lot of new areas. So, yeah, great thing to have around the ducklet. Uh, co Combat-wise, it's not that impressive. It's just a slightly improved Pelipper with better offensive capabilities. But it's still not very spectacular. So this one, this one should do it. Here we go. So now I'm going to send in um, Lilligan to put it to sleep and hopefully catch it with a minimum of fuss. So, here we go, Lilligan. Sleep Powder, 75% accuracy. Uh, I do know that it has Aerial Ace, but uh, still, Ducklet isn't a very strong Pokémon, especially with that level disadvantage. So I think even with um, with Aerial Ace, I can uh, deal with it, especially since if it starts spamming Bubble Beam. Uh, Aqua Ring might be a pain, though, because, well, it's healing itself, and that means it decreases my chances of catching it. So if I can just nail a sleep powder sometime today, doesn't look like it's gonna happen. I already missed three in a row and the chances of that happening are quite low. <laughs> it's weird, I just said I, I used sleep powder because it had better accuracy than the Sigilis Hypnosis, but uh, it didn't do a whole lot for me to be honest. So let's try and catch it now. Hopefully I can get it in one ball to sort of compensate for the time it took. One, two, three, no! Yes! <laughs> For some reason, it stayed in the Pokeball a bit, uh, a bit longer than usual before popping, so that's why I was sure it was going to come out. But fortunately, that didn't happen. I caught it. So, yeah, Ducklet is going to be used as an HM slave a bit later on when I get my hands on Fly and Surf. Now, one thing that I wanted to say about those feathers that you can get in here is that while they're much worse than vitamins, you can keep increasing your EVs past 100 with these, something you can't do with vitamins. So, yeah, definitely not the best way of getting EVs considering just your standard EV training, even without power items, will make things go by a lot faster. Nonetheless, it's interesting novelty, I guess. And Charles? Do I remember a Charles from Driftvale City? No, I don't, and it's hailing in the Driftvale City. This is one of the differences 
uh, that are more minor and cosmetic that I was talking about before, because uh, in winter, sometimes it's going to hail in certain places, including Driftvale City. So yeah, the drawbridge is pretty impressive. I mean, it's no Sky Arrow Bridge, and they call it the Charizard Bridge due to its elegant form. Yeah, way to go with the random reference to an old Pokemon everybody seems to love except the people who visit this channel. I mean, if you don't believe me, go look at the poll on my blog. The results you will find nowhere else on the internet, I promise. So, this is Clay. And it seems like whereas Castelia was supposed to represent New York, Nimbasa, Las Vegas, well, we are now in the heart of Texas! Just look at this at this outfit and the manner of speech. But yeah, Team Plasma grunts that they caught escaped when the drawbridge went down. So yeah, Sharon's got a point. How is it our fault? When Elisa called you, you should have just said, We caught we caught plasma grunts that are going to escape if we if we yeah, get the bridge down. But yeah, maybe it's a little heavy-handed. Well that's right, but um Oh well, beating up on some hapless Team Plasma grunts might be a nice entertainment in a place like this. Uh, okay, if we find Team Plasma, he's gonna let us, let us challenge, challenge, sorry, can't speak, the gym. So we have our condition here. Um, Team Plasma has hid themselves in the, the, in the cold storage, which is just south of Driftvale City. But we're not going to head there quite yet. We're going to take a look at the city proper, as we usually do. So, let's see if there's anything of note in this house. Doesn't look like it. Random worker from the cold storage. Yeah, it's just out of town, as I just told you. Share a training tip with you. Um, okay, even if your Pokémon's items are taken away, don't worry. They will be returned to you safely after the battle, but disposable items seem to disappear. You remember those Hariyamas in Victory Road back in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald? Back then, I was paranoid about getting hit by knockoff because I thought the item would disappear forever until I figured out that, no, it doesn't happen that way. Unless it's a consumable item, you're gonna get it back. So, um, Professor, yes, I don't have it with me. If that Pokemon is still with you, there's a special move it can learn. Yeah, if you have a starter from any region at max happiness, that trainer is going to teach you a Fire Pledge, Water Pledge, or Grass Pledge, whichever one is appropriate. These moves will create a special effect if they're combined in a battle. That's all they do, because they're very weak moves otherwise, and even the special effects just aren't worth move slots and all the preparation that's required. So, you know what? These pledge moves can go screw themselves. Now, this guy doesn't have anything interesting to say. On the other side of the ocean, there are a lot of different people and a lot of different Pokémon aren't there. Nothing interesting here either. This is the Drift Rail Market. We're just gonna enter this in a bit, but first, let's talk to this guy. Oh, this is that Charles guy from before. I really didn't remember anyone called Charles, but apparently it's this guy. So, yeah, this is the guy who's going to introduce you to a new type of battling, which is the Triple Battle. Um, by, by the way, if you're playing Black, you're going to get a Rotation Battle instead. Uh, because all the battles that are triple or rotation are inverted in uh, the other version. So, white is going to have mostly triple battles, and uh, black will have mostly rotation battles. But there are going to be a few of the other style just to, give you, just to get you familiar with them. So, let's, let's try out triple battles. I'm not, they, I don't find them much more interesting than doubles, if at all. Uh, but I guess uh, if they want, if they wanted to come up with a style of, of battle that would have even more Pokemon on the field than um, double battles, well, I guess this is it. So the way this works is that uh, you got three Pokemon, one next to the other, and uh, the one in the middle is going to be able to attack anyone on the other team, while the ones on the sides are only going to be able to attack the Pokemon that are on their side and the Pokemon that's in the middle as well. 
So, uh, be strategic if you want to choose a Pokémon that goes in the middle, because it can attack anyone on the field, but it can also be attacked by anyone on the field. So, you really have to be careful uh, when planning for your triples battle team. So, let's just finish those chumps off. Really shouldn't uh, take very long unless, <laughs> unless they start deciding to use super effective moves on me. Even get a defense drop hacks. Not that it shouldn't matter very much because this fight is going to end on the very next turn. Anyway, let's just go with Psybeam again on this thing. So yeah, these are triple battles in a nutshell. And the fun thing is that uh, triple battles got implemented in the real games at around the same time that Smogon tried to create something similar with Shoddy Battle, where you could uh, potentially fight with all six Pokémon at once. But as far as I know, this never saw the light of day because Shoddy Battle was phased out before this could happen. So, yeah, <laughs> I have potential. Well, it's not like I find this style of battle very interesting, so I won't be doing this a whole lot. If you want more triple battles, you should go to Opelucid City. Yeah, there's a building over there where you can fight triple battles every day. So, uh, for mid-level Pokémon, this is a pretty decent source of experience, I guess. So, let's head into the market, see what's there. There must be a convenient town where everything is imported and everything is available. Not that I know of, actually! Uh, oh, there's... Something right there. I'm sort of surprised that there's a hidden item inside a building. This rarely ever happens. Uh, I'm all sold out. This, that Charles guy bought everything I had. Oh, what do you sell? Would be pretty useful to know, but I guess uh, there's nothing doing, at least for the time being. So, here we can buy Moo Moo Milk, which is a very cost-effective source of healing. If you want a good healing item that costs cheap, definitely do come here. Goods carried away from Driftvale, we arrive in a town, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the world is connected. Deep stuff, man. You want something good? Well, I always want something good. Show me a Pokemon level 30 or more. Okay, so what am I going to get for this? An Expert Belt, which raises the damage of super effective moves by 20%. I might equip it on something. I'm not going to bother with it just now, though, because, um... Well, I'm busy exploring this town, and uh, I'm not going to fight any more trainers until I get to the cold storage anyway. Okay, nothing special here. Okay, medicinal herbs imported from another region. So I guess this is where you buy those medicinal herbs that uh, your Pokémon usually don't like and their happiness drops. There is one exception, though, that you might want to buy, and it's the revival herb. Max revives cannot be bought in this game. However, Revival Herbs do exact, exactly the same thing. They revive your Pokémon at full health, but they do lower your happiness a bit. And let's see what that item is down there. It's a big pearl. Okay. So, yeah, Revival Herbs. If you're, if you're short on max revives, you might want to come here and buy some because that's the, uh, that's the only source of... Um, renewable max revives, if you will, even if there is the catch with the happiness and all. But uh, that's a minor cost if you're struggling. Mm -hmm, yes, it is marvelous, I guess. You, what is it? Okay, so this chick here, if you uh, show her a move, a uh, Pokemon that knows a certain move, which is always going to be an, a TM move that you know, uh, that you already have, that is, uh, she is going to give you a hard scale, so just go and catch a Pokemon that can learn uh, the TM, then um, just teach it the TM, come here and cash in on your hard scale. And uh, you can do this every day for infinite hard scales, of course. And, yep, this is the point where Dusk Balls are now available. So, this is very interesting. Um, if you want to catch, tough to catch Pokemon, definitely come here, buy some Dusk Balls, because they are the best kind of ball, not called the Master Ball, basically. So, let's see here. This person have inter something interesting for me? This kind of Pokeball? Repeat Balls? Not worth it. They're less effective than Dusk Balls. And 
They usually won't work on a legendary unless you got someone else to uh, unless you got someone else to trade it, then trade it back or something like that. But yeah, uh, you, use dust balls. They're they're just better. So um, that's gonna be it for today. Next time we're gonna explore the remainder of Driftvale City and go to the cold storage.